Hi, my name is Peach. Let me not waste your time. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make these warp slash displacement transitions I figured out how to make. These effects are a little tricky to understand, so I suggest watching my AMV basics tutorial to get the basic understanding. The node we are going to be using today is the displace node. The displace node uses the luminance values of an image to distort your footage. So in Resolve, wherever on your displacement image or your displacement map, the image is white, your footage will be distorted in a certain value depending on how white the pixel is. It's confusing to comprehend, but once you follow my steps, then hopefully you understand. To start off, we first are going to make the warp slide transition. First, we're going to drag our adjustment clip on top of both clips that we want to put the transition on. Once we go into the fusion page, we're going to add a displace node to our graph. And inside the inspector, we are going to change the type to X and Y. Then we are going to add a background node and connect it to the green input of our displace node. On the background node, you're going to go down to type and hit gradient. Then you will have this black and white picture appear, which will be our displacement map. Once you have this, then go back to viewing your media out and click on the displace node. Here we are going to keyframe the X refraction at the beginning of your clip, right before the clip changes, and then the first frame after your clip changes. Then you will go back to your second keyframe and adjust the value to be around negative 0.7 to negative 0.4, depending on what you like. Then you're going to add another displacement node and change the type to X and Y. But this time for your displacement map, you're going to copy the same map, but you have to change the white values to black and the black values to white. Here I did it with an invert color node. Then on your second displacement node, you're going to keyframe at the end of your first clip, the start of the new clip and the end of the whole clip. At the second keyframe, you're going to change the value to any positive value between 0.4 and 0.7. Then you will have something that looks like this. From here, we're going to edit our spline graph. Go up to your spline tab and hit it. Turn on your first displace node to show the graph of the X refraction and highlight all those nodes and hit S to smooth them. Then change the graph to make an ease in curve. A good tip that I didn't learn until recently was if you hold control and move the handlebars of the keyframe, then only that side of the graph will be affected. So definitely use this when adjusting your spline graphs. Then on the second displace, we're going to change the X refraction graph and make an ease out curve. Then you will have this. Lastly, on both of our displacement nodes, we're going to turn on motion blur and change the values. And there you are, you have your slide warp. For the melt transition, we are going to start off the same way. Add your adjustment clip and your displace node. This time, instead of using the background node, we are going to use a fast noise node and connect it to the displace. You can add a fast noise node by clicking it here and dragging it onto your graph. On the fast noise node, we are going to bring up the detail and our contrast a little bit. Then we are going to uncheck the lock X and Y box so we can manually change our X and Y scale. For the X scale, put the value to 100 and for the Y scale, put the value to 10. Next, view your media out. Make sure your displace nodes type is X and Y, and we're going to keyframe our Y refraction at the start of the clip, at the end of the first clip, at the start of the second clip, and at the end of the second clip. Then at the second keyframe, put the Y refraction value at negative 0.1. And at the third keyframe, put the value to 0.1, then you should have this animation. Then we are going to keyframe our Y offset at the same places we keyframe the Y refraction, but at the second and third keyframe, we're going to have those values be at 0.5. Then adjust your spline graph of the wire fraction to make it look like the first transition we did. Have the graph of the first two keyframes ease in and on the last two keyframes have it ease out. Then adjust your spline of your Y offset to have it ease in and ease out graph as well. Then finally add motion blur to your displacement node and you're done. Lastly, we're going to do the pinch warp transition. We add our adjustment clip and our displace node and then our background node. On our background node, we're going to make it a gradient, but instead of having our gradient type be linear, we're going to change it to radial. Put the circle in the middle by changing the point position and switching the colors around. This time on our displace node, we're going to keep the value type at radial and we're going to keyframe the refraction strength. We're going to keyframe our refraction strength at the start of the clip, end of the first clip, at the start of the second clip, and at the end of the second clip. At the second keyframe, we're going to put the strength to around negative 0.7. And on the third keyframe, we are going to put the value to around 1.2. Also make sure that the other keyframes are at zero instead of 0 0.1. Then you should have this animation. Next, we're going to change the spline graphs the way we have been making them. Ease in curve and ease out curve. Then lastly, we'll add motion blur and we are finished. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to support the channel. If you have any more questions or requests on tutorials I should do in the future, please comment them down below. And if you are a DaVinci Resolve editor and you would like to join the Resolve AMV community discord, there's an invite link in the description if you'd like to join or need additional assistance. And with that, subscribe and have a good day. Yo, so I'm gonna do a different kind of outro card kind of thing. It's like some odd ones out type beat, you know what I mean? So you can get to know me more than just a monotone, super speed uh, talking narrator, you know? I know a lot of y'all have been saying that I speak too fast and you're totally right, but I for sure ain't wasting your time. And that's and that's the one thing I wanted to make sure. And also, if I speak too fast, you can just slow me down in the YouTube settings. So, you know, I can get that watch time up. But anyways, I appreciate you guys' support. And I'm glad I can help you out with these videos. So I can help spread my knowledge to help support this great community. But yeah, see you later.